Hi everybody, welcome back to Synthetic Biology 1. Well, today we're back in the computer lab. I'm going to be showing you how to decode functional DNA sequences using the DNA sequence editor software, Blast and GenBank. So here we are inside my computer, and as you can see, I have a very mysterious looking DNA sequence sitting on my desktop. It's called mysterypart.fasta, and this is a DNA sequence in the very standard fast a format. It's a text file with the name of the sequence on the top and then just a bunch of letters, just a bunch of letters, nothing that actually means anything. And it's our job to figure out what this is doing. So how are we going to do that? First, I'm going to open up a web browser and I'm going to go over to my DNA sequence editing software and sign in. I'm going to create a new project called Blast Tutorial. And I'm going to import this new DNA sequence in the FASTA format, which I can do just by dragging and dropping. And there we have it inside our DNA sequence editor software. But so far, we haven't learned anything. This part, it's still just a bunch of letters. Uh, I know it's 1,922 base pairs long, and, but I don't know anything else. And as you can see, if I go here, for example, and turn on annotations, there are no annotations known for this part. Nobody knows anything about it. Nobody knows anything about it. So the, the first thing that I'll do when I'm confronted with a completely naked piece of DNA like this is I want to check out the open reading frames. So you may recall that an open reading frame is a DNA sequence that starts with a start codon, ends with a stop codon, and it has a certain amount of length, a certain amount of meat inside that makes it look like a real gene rather than just two codons that ended up next to each other by accident. So the structure of an open reading frame or an ORF is simple enough that we can detect it automatically um, using software. So that's what I'm going to do. I can go right here to the options menu, turn on ORFs, and immediately a bunch of green lines appear as kind of annotations in my DNA sequence. I can click on any one of these, and as you'll see, they start with a start codon, like ATG, scrolling down to the end. They stop with a stop codon, in this case TAA, and they've got some meat. They've got some meat in between. So in particular, what this one looks like is that I've got one large ORF and then a bunch of smaller ORFs that are all inside of it. So for example, this ATG start codon is in frame with this larger ORF. So an ORF is a clue that a DNA sequence might code for a protein, okay? And a protein uh, is going to have certain functional features that are going to give us a clue about what the purpose of this particular synthetic DNA sequence is. And so in order to find that protein, we use BLAST. BLAST stands for Basic Local Alignment Search Tool, and it's basically a search engine for GenBank. It allows us to match our DNA sequence or a protein sequence against all the sequences that are available in GenBank and see if there's anything known that matches our sequence. So you might notice sitting right here in Benchling, BLAST, the BLAST option. Uh, so we can do this through the built-in Benchling feature or just for teaching purposes, we can do it the old-fashioned way by Googling BLAST and going here to the NCBI BLAST database, okay? So I am going to search for a protein, so I'll choose this option. I'm going to search my translated nucleotides. 
against their protein database. And then I'm going to go here and I'm, I'll copy my ORF and I'll just paste it into the blast prompt and say go. And uh, you can see it takes us to this uh, search screen. So it usually takes about a minute for a blast search to complete and the page gets updated every few seconds until the, until the search is complete. And now. And now. And there it is. And now. Hey, all right. It looks like we found some hits. So as you can see, there's a, there's a ton of information that comes up when you get a blast hit for your search. I'm not going to go over everything. But I am going to pause um, at this box and see that the red color indicates that our hits are almost perfect. So they're near perfect alignments or perfect. And they appear to be matching the sequence that I blasted across its entire length from about 1 to about 1600 base pairs. Okay, So this is a very good sign. It means that we found exact matches for our sequence. And if I scroll down here, I see the names of the sequence files that I've hit. Uh, and in many cases, that is all you need to get a very important clue about what the function is of the, um, the DNA sequence that you've searched. So for example, I can see right, right away here um, that this is firefly luciferase. So that's the name of an enzyme. And a simple blast search will reveal that firefly luciferase is a very cool enzyme. It's involved in the production of bioluminescence uh, and it uh, catalyzes a chemical reaction that produces light. So that is very cool. We have here a DNA sequence that can produce luciferase and therefore presumably is involved somehow in the production of light. So now with that knowledge in mind, I can go to this ORF that I've blasted and I can say create annotation and I can call this what it is, which is luciferase. And there you have it, a very mysterious DNA sequence made slightly less mysterious with the help of blast. So until next time, stay blasted.